On the email that I sent, there are, uh, I don't know, I think I, I, I sent four or five attachments. One of them is a PDF called Lyric Comps. I went into the multi-list and I drew a map to include Lincoln Larimer and got everything that sold uh, within the last year or so. Uh, the, just the multifamily. The strange thing was uh, none of them were ready to be moved into uh, for the most part. They all needed something. But they were two-bed units. So you'll see in the spreadsheet, I'll show you in a minute, I said, let's just pretend that the rent for each of them is 750. And I took the best guess that I could of what the rehab will be. Right. This, you can see right here, sold for 55. In order to find out how much something sold for, don't go by the number at the top. Scroll down to the bottom just above the history and it'll show you what it sold for now this i've i've never seen anything like this it was listed for 25 in june it sold for more than twice that let's see new listing in june went contingent in july under contract in October and then sold. Uh, they're showing days on market as 75, uh, obviously, or as 17, you know, from June 30th until October 30th. <laughs> That's not 17 days, so obviously there's something that I'm misunderstanding. The next one is uh, here on Lincoln. You can see again that it's two bedroom units. Uh, in the spreadsheet, uh, you'll see I, I said I pretended that those are uh, going to rent for 750 each. There is a structural problem with this one. Uh, please use caution while showing unstable, blah, blah, has been condemned. Unstable flooring. So that's probably not a, you know, a major structural issue. But you know, the building's not ready to be moved into. It's sold for three grand. Uh, I had a really hard time guessing what the rehab would be, but you'll see I assigned a number to it. Now, it's not so unstable that they couldn't get into it because you do see inside pictures. This one, you know, you can go into the... All right, see how that's a tab? Each one of these will have a, a tab for the listing, a tab for the photos, tab for the history and there should be a tab for the taxes uh, if they exist this is the very best comp that there is for yours right on lyric street uh, i think you can see it from your property it's on lyric on the odd side of the street seven units they're all vacant it was listed for a buck and a half. See that up in the right-hand corner? I scroll down to see what it sold for. Sold for a buck sixty-five, and in two days. Uh, dude, I don't see that, you know? I mean, I don't see that kind of stuff happening. Well, I have, but it's really rare. So it sold 15 above ask, 
and it disappeared in two days, and it's vacant. It's, it can't be lived in right now. There are some pictures. Uh, let's see, there's, there's seven units, so there's, there's at least one breaker box. Outside looks pretty good, but, you know, the inside is not so great. Uh, it's real hard. You know, I just took a wild guess how much to estimate on rehab. I suppose that's a kitchen. Uh, you know, uh, there are no appliances. I'm just going by linoleum there thinking that's probably a kitchen. I don't know if every single kitchen in there is like that. They're going to have to buy appliances for every one. There's the uh, bathtub. You know, that's in, that's in rough shape. That's in rough shape, but in two days, it disappeared for 15 above ask. There's Mayflower, two units. Uh, oh, this one actually has got rent. So, you know, 20 grand, 21 a year it brings in. All right. That's enough of that. You you can figure out how to sort that out. Uh, how to produce, okay. All right. Here's a spreadsheet for the comps. This is yours. And they're all laid out pretty much the same. Uh, this column F is going to have what it sold for. And then in D... You know, usually around there, I put the number of units. Uh, here's what's what's important. You want to look at what is the base price per unit, how much is it going to take to rehab, and then I highlighted for you the total price per unit. So this one is thirty-seven grand a unit, based on the rehab that I came up with. Uh, the rehab that I came up with is over here. Uh, the cost of a kitchen, cost of a bathroom, uh, that's all the inside work, and then outside, the painting, the roof, and then I totaled it all up. So that's how I got the price per unit. Then I said, what's the price of the building? All right, the only thing that is well it's not really tricky uh i needed some way to compare these how much money are you getting back for what you're paying so this is c4 total income for the year that's based on assuming 750 a unit okay see 750 pro forma rent per month C4 divided by J3, which is the price. So what do I get divided by what did I pay? Real simple. That's the gross return percent. It's kind of a meaningless number, but if I get that same number for every one of the properties, then I can compare. So this compares to almost identical with the one down the street on Lyric. On Rowan, 20%, right in the same range. Lincoln, 29 same range. Somebody on Paulson got a really sweet deal. And Auburn, oh yeah, this is the one that went for more than twice what they were asking. Listed at 25, sold at more than 50, about a 28% gross return. So with the exception of the outlier right here, they're all getting returns in the low to high 20s. Uh, now, again, it's a meaningless number. It's just a way of doing the comparison. The thing that's more meaningful that you want to look at is the final price per unit. And all of them, it's about 30 grand a unit. T 
to understand a little bit more about what that means, you can search. I like the Coldwell Banker site for searching. Now pull up multi-units and see what people are paying per unit. Yeah, it's like 50 to 100 grand per unit. A lot of bread. So, you know, what the, the problem I had was when I did this, uh, it looked good, you know. The price looked good. It was killing me. I, I'm still thinking maybe I made a mistake. Now, how to purchase, uh, that's kind of complicated. I put it in three parts. How much do you pay Malcolm? Well, if you pay him 20 grand a side for the as is, you know, for the building right the way it is right now, then you would pay him 40. And that's it. He'd get 40 grand. Done and done. You need to put, well, I'm guessing 10 grand into each side, so that's 20. You need to come up with 60. How are you going to come up with 60 grand? Maybe a private lender. A private lender is going to want to see skin in the game, so you put in 10 grand of your own and you borrow 50 from the private lender. So there's your 60 grand. You put in 10, you borrowed 50. 40 goes to purchase the building, 20 for the rehab, and 60 is your total cash needed. There's the $10,000 out of pocket, the cash borrowed from the private vendor, uh, private lender. Uh, over about a six month period, this will be the interest that you accumulate. And this is what your payoff amount is gonna be. So six months down the road, you'll have a building rehabbed, tenants are in it, paying 750 a month, and you owe the private lender 53750 How are you going to get out of that? All right. Step three, that's where you do a refi with the bank. If you're lucky, yeah, you know, I, I make all this shit up, but if you're lucky, the after repair value would come to, say, 72000 Now let's jump down here. All right, value of the building is seventy-two thousand. Hmm. All right, I, I put the rent at eight hundred there. Uh, what you want to borrow? All right. See, see the formula up there in the formula bar G fourteen. That's G fourteen. Right there. You want to borrow enough money to pay the private lender off. Now, if you borrow that much money at 6% over 30 years, principal and interest is that much. I'm guessing that the annual tax is a grand. That's a, there's a monthly tax. The pity is 431. The way the bank determines your net operating is it's half of your gross receipts. So your gross receipts would be 800 plus 800. Your net operating would be half of that or 800. And then they do the debt service coverage ratio. In other words, can you cover the debt. How much cash have you got to cover it? So this number, look at the formula bar up there at the top left corner, you see equal K21 divided by K20. So it's saying, here's the money that I have to cover my debt with, and here's my debt. 
if I divide the debt into the money that I have to cover it, what do I get? I get 1.86. If the answer was 1, then that means the NOI is exactly what I need to cover the debt. The bank wants to see that you've got you know, a little bit extra in case something goes wrong. Uh, Spencer Ritchie at s and said they want that number to be 1.25 or greater. So you're coming at 1.86. Now, if this rent was 750, you're at 1.74. So, you know, you're, you're still making it. And 750 is a bit more likely to be your rent. Uh, suppose you said, I want to pull out, instead of exactly what I'm owed, I want to pull out 60. Get back some of that 10 that you put in. All right. That, that, that's working out too. Your P&I went up to 360. Debt service coverage ratio is still okay. All right, you're borrowing. Uh, let's, how's, whoops, okay, there's a problem. As Soon as I did that, your LTV went to 83%. So 60 is a little too high. Let's see if you can borrow. 58. Uh, whoops. Uh, all right, let's try that again. Need another zero. Five eight zero zero zero. Uh, that's that's right at the edge. So looks like five seven zero zero zero. If, if you're building appraised at 72 after repair, you could pull out 57 from Spencer at s and That would put your LTV under 80, which is what Spencer wants. If you're renting at 750, your debt service coverage ratio would be 1.67, which is also what Spencer wants. So this is one way that you can finance. Uh, all right, let me go over that email that I sent to you. The thing that you want to do is get in touch with... Uh, get in touch with John... Nordquist. Uh, right, something's uh, blast. Something's not right. I, I, I'm sure that I sent you an email, but maybe I didn't. I'm gonna try that one more time. Okay, uh, Nordquist. N O R. Oh, come on. All right, you want to get in touch with J-O-N dot N-O-R-D-Q-U-I-S-T at Comcast dot net. John Nordquist, he charges about 400 bucks to do an appraisal. Uh, Cully knows him. Nordquist has appraised two of Cully's places. Usually we just have an appraiser do an as built or a subject to. It's where you walk through with him, you explain everything that you're going to do, what the finishes are going to be, what the flooring is going to be, what the appliances are going to be. That creates this fictional house that will exist. He then takes that fictional house, comps it against everything else to see what it's worth. 
uh, cost about 400 bucks. That's the as built. You also probably should get the as is so that when you're talking with Malcolm about what you would pay, you know what the as is amounts to and you know what a reasonable number is. All right, I'm headed off to DC in a few minutes. 